So um, I need some hands. Who are game developers here? Okay, who of you have a salary, like a monthly wage? Okay, that's about half of you, let's say. Um, okay, interesting. Today I'll be talking a bit about the, the, the name of the, the talk is going to be Skin in the Game. I, I need to have a big fat disclaimer above my head because I am also currently in a game jam and I need to finish gaming in three hours. Um, it's going well, but I didn't have that much time to prepare a talk. I, um, that's the disclaimer. So the, the talk is called uh, Skin in the Game. And I'm going to try to explain to you what it means and um, how it also kind of correlates with uh, the breakup uh, uh, we're going through. And let's play here. I, uh, I drew all my... Uh, not, I, you know, paper. Um, okay, so, today I'll be mostly talking about uh, these curves. These are kind of abstract models. Um, they're go I'm going to be using these throughout my entire presentation. Uh, Probably you know that these kinds of curves are called exponential. Um, so they are not linear. They increase in, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that it just becomes more and more and more and more and more, or they decrease uh, in a similar way. First, I'd like to start with a bit about the games Game Oven has made. Um, a couple of those. So, Finger was our first game, and after that, we made a company. And this is basically what happened. We invested time in a bunch of uh, games. French Trap, Pepfu, Bounden. Some we invested much more in, some we invested less in. Um, and that's why I've been trying to, to get a sketch here. Uh, French Trap, we didn't put that much time in. Um, Pepfu, we put a zero amount of time in. And Bounden, we, we went uh, <laughs> crazy, basically. Uh, 11 people uh, of average half full time. Uh, that was for us our, our biggest uh, project so far. So we have a lot of costs. So just about to explain these uh, these graphs that I have all the time. And the, the vertical is the money investment, or money in short, and the right is time. So the more uh, time we spend, uh, the more money we uh, spend. So that was about the cost. This was kind of the expectations of all those games to, throughout the, the process, throughout the development. Um, we, we always knew that French Trap uh, which was basically at the bottom, um, was never going to make any money or maybe you know, a couple a couple bucks. I think it, it totally made about like 30 bucks or so. Um, Banfu, uh, we did a pretty decently big investment into that. Um, and we hope, I think our hopes were higher than, um, than, than the kind of anticipated uh, success and the financial success of the game. So we always kind of knew that mm, it's not going to do that well, it's not going to be another Fingal or something. But you know, we've already invested this amount of much of, uh, of time and money, we should just continue with it and finish it. Um, but for Bound, there was already a lot of press and there was a lot of, already a lot of things happening. A lot of people being really excited about it, we were already nominated, like lots of honest reactions that were genuinely good. So that anticipation was much bigger for, uh, for Bound. Um, so if you combine these two, you get some sort of reality uh, thing. Uh, this is, uh, so this is how it eventually uh, turned out. Uh, French Trap made uh, no money, like, yeah, like I said, like 30 bucks. Uh, Bamfu made just a bit, just a bit money. Uh, and Bauman eventually actually crossed the, crossed the, the break-even line and uh, is making more money than we, uh, than we lost on it. So this is entirely from the perspective of Game Oven, how the games that were made during the, uh, during our company in the three years that we've existed, uh, how they did. So as you can see, only Bounden uh, did well. That's of course kind of troubling. Um, that doesn't mean we didn't enjoy making the others, or it doesn't mean that uh, we shouldn't have made them. That, that was just our only success. Um, what you need to understand about this perspective is that you can also look at this from the perspective of individual persons. And what you get then is that you get the costs for each person um, to do what he wants to do. It's basically zero. Of course, you have to live, but that's all. That's 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 not what I want to talk. You talk about. I want to talk about the costs of being able to make uh, what you do. So these are the costs. Uh, these are the 
this is the anticipation, expectation, you're going to get a salary every month. Um, and it's linear, it's, it's going up. Like, you know that one month from now, uh, you'll make this amount of money. Uh, two months from now, you'll have this amount, six months, etc. Um, so this is the reality for that person um, with the salary. But if you compare this to this, what's happening? This is, to me, I think, completely unfair, right? What happened here? Uh, how, how can everyone that is getting salary um, not lose anything while the company has to make huge risks? This is what I've been thinking about a lot. And uh, this is what, but yeah, one of the things that eventually drove me to, to yeah, um, also disband the game. Because, you know, so a lot of people here, and this is also including me, uh, we're just getting monthly wage, so um, of course it's still my company, but in the end I was getting a monthly wage, so I could basically do whatever I want. If I made a stupid game, I would still get a, a, a monthly wage uh, that month. If I, made, uh, if I did, really did my best, it wouldn't really add anything. While, you know, other people from the... Um, from the uh, entrepreneur side in me, I had to work really damn hard to make sure uh, Game Often was, uh, would be allowed to, to exist. And uh, you know, I spent many nightly hours in it, and uh, uh, every day I was, I was thinking and working about it, uh, crunching my, my head over it. Oh, a bit of a, a different story. Because Fingal was very different. Fingal was made before we, we did Game Often, and uh, nobody was uh, getting salaries. I need to shut something off. Because I don't want this. Where am I? What? <laughs> okay, so Fingal, uh, Fingal worked very differently. Uh, we were still kind of students. We didn't need any money. So that's how we didn't really have any costs. Um, the expectations kind of blew up the moment we were nominated for IGF, out of the blue. So it was, it was, there was a lot of anticipation happening. Uh, the expectations were getting really high, and eventually oh, the reality, uh, reality be also became that. Like, the, the costs were so low that there was only one way to go. It could only become better. Um, so yeah, then you have uh, something like this. And from a person, individual perspective, um, the costs were uh, uh, yeah, linear, still going down, so now the costs are my personal investment. Um, but the business of profit was still you know, largely uh, going up. And then this is the reality, so if you compare uh, this with this, I feel that this is, there's a much bigger correlation between the two. I want to add one little thing here. That's kind of important to know. So I, here, I'm, here I am, one person, uh, and my my uh, costs are pretty linear in this case. If you go to more people, it becomes more complex, and the potential costs or the investment or the there's more potential for complexity, and thus there is a, a bigger chance that costs will be exponentially going down, or the cost will be going up. So yeah, the more people you have, the higher your costs uh, can be. So then your reality becomes more like this. And this kind of looks like this one. Huh? So I see a correlation in there. Basically, so what this says is the more people you work with, um, the, the bigger your costs, the lower the chance is that you will have success. Well, this, this maybe sounds really logical, and it is in a way, but this is all really a lot of, very much dependent on a lot of anticipation and uh, uh, difficult choices that you have to go through when you're making your game. So, um, so yeah, I think it's still worth saying. Um, so if you're going to make investments, then I, I, if I'm going to make investments, I've started thinking about um, will these investments be linear or exponential? Because I found that almost nothing is linear uh, in that regard. And maybe you guys are uh, are losing it here, but uh, just wait. Uh, try, try, try. Um, so, if you know that almost nothing is linear, then you better focus on the things that are uh, going to be positively linear for you. So that's where we come back, come back to this thing. 
if you want to make money, you want to be on the on the far left uh, uh, curve. You don't want to be on the on the second curve, and you definitely don't want to be any of the other ones. This makes so much sense. And now this is where the interesting part will come in because. Now I want to talk about motivation and then everything will come together and you'll all be like, ah, so that's what the hell he's talking about. Um, so, I also want to talk a bit about motivation. Because I've kind of found this. And this says, you are more productive when you are extremely motivated. That's basically what it says. Um, but I want to dig a bit more, a bit deeper into that. So let's focus on that, that 10% on the far right. Uh, because I think that, that that last bit of motivation, that extra push um, that you can be motivated with, can, can cause self-discipline and can make you a perfectionist and can help you reflect. And you know, everything you will do is like because, of your, because you're so into it and so interested into it. This causes some, some sort of drive or some sort of uh, it makes you assertive. If you really want to go for it, you're going to do things. You are going to do things. And this drive, will, you know, that's the, the things I mentioned earlier. You, you'll wake up with solutions. You'll forget to eat. You're going to work every night. Um, you're going to be experimenting with your tools, with your process, with, with your concepts. It, this is all because you were so motivated. And then there's this, this confrontation component that you're willing to be confronted with reality. Uh, so you're, you don't, you will allow yourself to kill your darlings. Uh, it will grant you insights and challenges. And this, can, this is also kind of the part where you learn. If you really want to, um, this confrontation will help you learn. So, and this is where I throw it all together. I think, and this is the concept, skin in the game, um, that if you have something to lose, you will be inherently more motivated and you will be able to reach that 10% extra that you need to make beautiful, awesome games. Now, let's look at this for a, for a little while. <coughs> Great. From the beginning, You know, the curve's exponential. Um, we're losing a lot here. Uh, the company is, at least. Um, yes, but the people with salaries, uh, they have nothing to lose here. And so we're taking a huge, huge, huge risk. This is unfair. We're all doing this. Nobody's doing this. Oh, but wait a second, with Fingal, we were actually more like this, because, you know, Fingal, we barely get any investments. Uh, potential was high, reality became high. Fingal did a great job. So here we were working more like this. We all had a very, very uh, low investment. Um, potential profit was high. We gave a lot. Uh, yeah. Not too many people worked on it, so the complexity wasn't that high, uh, etc., etc. I'm just going through the slides now. <laughs> Okay, I want to give you a couple heuristics, which are soft and simple rules. Uh, these are soft and simple rules to help you see where there is skin in the game and when there, where there isn't. Um, this is actually stuff that's very practical and that you can almost, almost apply to your, uh, yeah, to your active game development. Um, Ooh, it's a whole list. So um, people who are uh, compensated by getting a revenue share, they have something to lose because they're putting personal investment into it. Uh, we have people that are selling and marketing their own game. Those are personally invested because they made the game themselves. Um, they're, I'm not saying that people that aren't are not motivated. I'm saying that they will have the extra 10%. Um, if you make your own game, um, then you will be more inclined to finish and make it a good own game. Uh, if you are investing, things that are of value to you could be money, could be 
lots of work, could be time, then you will be more, then you will have more skin in the game, thus you will have more, the 10% the extra motivation. And then there's a lot of things you can lose. You can, it can be money, respect, time, relationship with others, self-esteem, uh, pride, um, yeah, those kinds of things. Now let's go to the painful slide, where all of us are going to be like, oh, I think I hate you, and I totally disagree with you. No skin in the game. This is a list of people that have no skin in the game. So, yes. Ouch. Um, of course, people with salaries comes with this claim right here, because if it's your own company, then you'll, you'll probably have the 10%. But consultants, people who come to you and advise you how to do your work, uh, they will inherently have not have that 10% extra motivation. Academics, if they write a sucky paper, nobody gives a damn, except the academic world. Mm -hmm. um, programmers, they have design decisions. They're not, it's not their responsibility, so if they make a design decision and the designer is fucked, programmer can just get away with it. He has nothing to lose. The artist making design decisions, same, same story. Publishers more often have so much money, so much money, that, you know, 10k here, 20k there, and then the marketing people who get uh, salaries, yeah, they're not, they're not losing anything on it, so let's just do a bit of marketing for you. Uh, this, of course, doesn't go for every, every publisher, but most of them, unfortunately, uh, it works like that. Then marketing people, there's a lot of people in, in the games industry that, that you can hire to do marketing services, but these people have nothing to lose if you're, you're paying them. Um, so yeah, and then the last one, advice, I think is very interesting. If someone gives you advice, but he, he has nothing to lose, then why, then maybe it's a good good idea not to, to listen to him, because people will do different things when they've got something to lose, as, uh, if, as if when, there, when there's nothing to lose. Um, yeah, okay, so very practical. And this is kind of what happened what I realized and why, I, why, uh, why we decided to put game on it. I wanted to go to some sort of idyllic... Uh, uh, ide ideal? Idealistic, thank you. I wanted to go to some sort of idealistic uh, uh, thing that everyone I'm going to work with will have something to lose. Uh, so that 10% that extra motivation will come from you. I will try to keep these costs super low so that I am losing, but I'm not losing that much. Now I'm not taking that much, um, uh, 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 how do you say that? Danger? Costs? How do you say that? Price. Yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, reflecting your curves, and this is actually something that's surprisingly easy. And I will, I think I can explain an anecdote with this. Let's say you're stuck in, let's say there's traffic. Um, there's a highway, it can have about 400 cars. If there is 300 cars, there will be no traffic. If there is 350 cars, there will, there might be a bit of traffic. If there is 380 cars, there's probably traffic. If there's 400 cars, there is traffic. And it's gonna, like the traffic's gonna, bring a delay of, say, 10 minutes. But if there's 600 cars, or 500 cars, it's gonna be exponentially much, 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 much more bigger. Um, so there is, there is a very um, visible limit to a lot of things that are non-linear. Um, and to know that they are, first of all, non-linear, and to know where the limit is, is very, is a very, very helpful tool to make some really big life-changing decisions. Uh, this, this is actually very advanced uh, uh, stuff, so if you're like, what the hell are you saying out there, please come to me afterwards. Um, so yeah, I, what I am going to try to do is only work on these positive exponential curves, which means I'm barely going to do any, I'm going to do investments, I'm going to keep my costs low, but I'm going to only go to do the things that are potentially really, really, really big. Um, basically, what you saw with Fingal, that's what I'll really continue to do. And I think the biggest practical uh, thing of my, from my talk that you, uh, that you can get is this. So I advise you to, to not take any advice. <laughs> um, 
And now I will uh, read a um, autograph poem. <coughs> Sorry to be drawn on my generators, ate you. Want a good day? At my current form is that the game will let me upload surfaces and the game. We feel bad, that is valuable, and the subject matter is history. And I will let Maria and the game of my prototypes of his own. The game is that Bounden was in my heart attack. And the rest are in your life is that it's not just about sex, the subject to make hello that you can do that, Sean, is the best replacement parts and the half day at my generators are being able to top 10 lists and the game that I will let you want, a game of finding out. That is a good night, my way home, and the subject matter is a good Christmas tree in your nearest and I will give cards and a game about to make sure they are barely got the subject to be working with another my way home from a good day. Too many of them have to make a decision. The reason being a lot I can do is that Bounden, the best interview with all my way to be in town of a game is big and the rest if you're interested, but I'm going out of this understood the subject to make it ready and the game crashed out for me. Know that you're nearest to the subject of the game and I have nothing else and you can somewhat hold the game I will let you have a tycoon, and I would even allow the game, I will be complaining that it's history, and I have no attention to the subject matter, how many shield, and you haven't been able to the subject of a message that I have nothing to do with, all the game, I will let me to the subject matter of my life, and I have nothing else to do with all with a good Christmas, but it doesn't matter to, aww. Oh. That's a game, and going through the city, most of his thesis, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about sex, and I would expect from a game about the fact. And you can have to make hello, how about you can have a tycoon, Mikhail said he would have a relationship, because it will let you have the game. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> That was uh, interesting. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, Joost, be critical. Um, you mentioned the, uh, the loop for the curves, and then you gave an example from traffic. Yeah. Could you give an example from game development? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's say I am going to make a game on a platform, and it barely has any barely has any extra cost to go to multiple platforms. Then the curve for platforms and the potential curve of making money if you're going to multiple platforms will be exponential. So every platform you add, you uh, get this much chance of uh, getting success. That's one example. Um, another curve. Let's say you are making a game making examples on stage. <laughs> I, I will, I, the thing is it's used as an analysis tool, so it, you, if you're working on something, you have to make a decision about something. That that's the moment that you start thinking, hey, is this linear or is this non-linear? And does, does this go positive linear for me or does this go negative linear for me? Um, and I think what you're at most trying to avoid is that things become uh, non-linear uh, but more in terms of a negative way. So the more people you hire, the more difficult it will be to uh, to actually achieve success, to make to actually make back all the investments that you're doing, because the investment is a negative curve, uh, a non-exponential negative curve. So that's that's another example of the, of the thing. However, for I think for every game, um, especially if you're going for entertainment, for instance, the the, the, the profit from an entertainment game is almost always positively non-exponential. 
while if you're doing work for hire, and this I think is a good example, work for hire is not a non-linear curve, it's a very linear curve. So if you want to make enough money uh, with work for hire work, then you, are, you must be very aware that, non that uh, work for hire is non-linear and that there will always be a maximum amount uh, of money that you can make. Um, but there will also be the cost, so that, that's, it's a more easier calculation. Um, but you're also going to get stuck in that, and that's actually something you see a lot. Uh, so do you see what I mean with the curves and not curves? Yeah.